are doing some great things for the church and we just are looking forward to what God's got in store for us. Um, we're going to say a quick prayer here before we get into worship. Um, bow your heads and help me uh, with this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, God, we're so gracious and thankful for another day, another Sunday, Lord, that you have provided for us to be able to worship you and to put you first, Lord. We love you and we give this day to you. We give our lives to you, Lord. We just want to serve you. Lord, we know that you're coming soon and we look for your coming, Lord. We are so grateful that we're going to be with you for eternity and glory. Lord, just bless our service today. Lord, bring down your power. Bring down your Holy Spirit. Fill each and every one of our hearts and our lives, Lord, with your, your spirit. We thank you for it. and We give this service to you now and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. How many want to please the Lord out there? Amen. Okay. If you want to please the Lord, I'll tell you how you do it. I wore my shirt today. I like this shirt. It says, created to worship. Okay? We want to worship God. If you worship God, if the Bible says that He inhabits the praises of His people. Um, so, we, did you know we were created to worship? That's what we were created for, is to worship. And um, then right down here at the bottom, it says, in small print, for an audience of one. So, I want to tell you, it's not that we're up here singing to you. That's really not how it goes. What it, the way it goes, what we want is all of us to sing together to the one audience, the one true God. We're going to sing and worship God today. It's all about Him. It's not about us or anything else. Everything is about Him, and we want to worship Him today. Amen? Amen. Okay. It's the time to worship. Help me sing. Come, now is it time to worship. Come, now is it time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Just as you are before your God, come, come, now is the time to worship, come, now is the time to give your heart, come, just as you are to Just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as we are to worship. Come, just as you are One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now.
just as you are, dear worship. Come, just as you are, before your God. Come, come, Amen. Praise God. There's power in His blood this morning. to say, uh, you know, we were talking about Ron and Sue, and uh, we can't wait till they get back with us, but until then, Ron, uh, Ron used to always say this, or he said it quite a bit, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good yes, he is. all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Here we go. Here we go. God, God is good all the time. He put his song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, this light will shine. God is good. Yes. God is good. All the time. That's right. Listen. If you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear. He will guide you. He will keep you safe and sound. He has promised to never leave you. Oh, 
Lord forsake you. And his word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good. sinners and so unworthy still for us he chose to die he filled us with his holy spirit now we can stand and testify that his love is everlasting and his mercies they will never end god is good all the time put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God, God is good all, all the time. time. Through the darkest night, this light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Yes, He is. Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God bless you. God, God is good, isn't he? <clears throat> All the time. I just uh, kind of want to uh, say that uh, without God, where would we all be? We wouldn't have a chance, no chance at all, of ever seeing heaven or anything else. He's everything to me. He should be everything to you. Let's pray. Father, I pray that all of these people and everybody in the world knows who you are, and if they don't, that you would show them. We have faith in you all the time. Father, bless this time and, and the uh, communion that we're going to have. And just we thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
without you I fall apart You're the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh, God, how I need you Where sin runs deep your grace is more, grace is found, is where you are. Where you are, Lord, I am free. Holy death is Christ in me. Okay, now we have commun or, uh, <coughs> offering. I'll get it right. Uh, our chance to give back to God a little something of what he's given us. He's given us everything that we can imagine. And I, I, I just can't explain how much that is. Father, I just want to thank you for what you've given us and that everything that we can give to you, that we do so. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When temptation comes my way when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. and open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, chapter 12, put a marker there, we're going to look at a couple of other verses before we get to that one, but we're going to jump around a little bit, hey, we are in part four of this series titled The Extreme Life, and in this series, we have been just looking about how God, we've been learning how God wants us to live an extreme life. He never wanted us or he never intended us to live a life that's just getting by, a life that's just mediocre, just kind of, just kind of the land of, of just making it. Never wanted us to do that. He, it wasn't what his plan was for us. You see, we learned in this series so far that he wanted us to live a full life as Christ followers, 
following God's plan and God's purpose for our lives. We've heard him say that, that he wants us to be uh, intimate with him on a daily basis. He wants to walk with us daily. He wants to be a part of our lives. It's, it's hard to grasp sometimes because we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and we've talked about the whispering voice of God and, and how the voice comes from heaven to guide us and direct us and how the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to give us wisdom and knowledge. And so he's calling us to walk in that wisdom, to walk in that knowledge and uh, honestly, I've been saying it for a few weeks now, but sometimes even as Christ followers, we're kind of afraid of the Holy Spirit. Now, not so much all of you, because I know you're not, but, but for some, the Holy Spirit is kind of elusive, sometimes a little scary, right? Because we talked about as a kid, you know, they called it the Holy Ghost, you know, and, and Andy, do you want the Holy Ghost to come in you? No. <laughs> you know, you're petrified because it's like, I don't, no, I don't want any ghost to come in me. And, and we think, well, that's a child thing. But in reality, sometimes it's a, an adult thing too. And God puts the Holy Spirit into us as Christ followers for a purpose, for you and I to be able to walk in his fullness of life. And so God wants us to walk that way. I remember when I was, uh, when I, not when I was a kid, but when my grandkids were just very little, um, they were at my house all the time. I mean, three years old, two years old. They loved to go to grandma and grandpa's house, and we would, we'd have them all the time. And, and grandma wanted to teach them all about Jesus at a very young age. I mean, and so, so uh, uh, Shirley, my wife, um, would say things to them all the time about the Lord. Imagine that, right? Because she does that anyway. She did that anyway. She used to do that anyway. But, but anyway, so um, we were going out from this little apartment that we owned, not that we owned, that we rented when we first got married. Now, let me tell you something about this apartment. It has nothing to do with the sermon, but I'm thinking about it. It was a little apartment. I mean, I could put a hand on this wall and a hand on that wall almost. One of those deals, right? It was a small little two-bedroom uh, apartment, but every room was just little in it, and, and it, it was great. We thought it was amazing because we were just starting out, and we loved that. Well, one day we were coming down from the apartment with, with uh, my youngest grandson, Andrew. He's named after me. And anyway, we were coming downstairs and walking across the parking lot, and he tripped, and he scraped his knee. Well, he started bawling, right, because he's, oh, I fell there my knee, you know. And Grandma says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, and she put her hand on his knee and prayed for him. And he goes, my knee feels better. And, and Shirley says, that's because we prayed, right? Because she took every opportunity to share the Lord with these boys. And he goes, he says, Grandma, how does God do that? And she says, he just, he created everything, Andrew. He's, he's, he knows how to do everything. He heals everything. You know, he's, he's, he can do anything. And, and then she says, you see that little bird over there? And there was just this little baby bird. God made that bird. And Andrew goes, how does God do that? And, and I realized as I'm listening to this and I'm watching all of this unfold and I'm thinking about our message today and I'm thinking, you know, as children, we live in amazement. How does God do this? Wow, God is something, he's powerful, he can do anything. And then you and I grow up and we become more mature 
and we lose the amazement. Or we lose that how does God do that moment? Well, it was one Christmas and, and uh, my oldest grandson, Jeffrey, uh, was over the house. And so I sat down with him and grandma sat down with him and we said, what do you want for Christmas? And he said, you know, grandpa, I want Rock'em Sock'em Robot. <laughs> because you and I could play that together. I didn't want to tell him I would knock his block off every time because <laughs> I had that as a kid and I knew I was the Rock'em Sock'em Robot guy. Hit him under the chin and poof, there goes the head. Well, anyway, so I says, well, okay, good. Okay, we'll get Rock'em Sock'em Robot. What else do you want? He said, that's it. That's all I want. And I says, really? Yeah, that, that would be great to have that. And you know, I'm thinking about our message. And I'm thinking that you and I, sometimes, we just say, God says, God says, I want to give you life to the full. I want to give you more than you can ask or think. I want to give you a life that is abundant, one that, one that is overflowing. So what can I do for you, young Andrew? And young Andrew goes, I'd like Rock'em Sock'em Robot. And God says, you don't get it. I've got so much more for you than what you're wanting for yourself. Friends, there's a message in this. The message is that where are you? Do you just say, I just want to be able to get by? Or do you just say, God, I want everything that you have for me. I want to live the abundant life that you have for me. I want to live the extreme life that is full of God's purpose, God's plan. I want to do whatever you're calling me to do. And I know that if I do that, then I'll live the life that you have for me. Friends, that's where he wants us to be. He wants us to walk in that way, not walking around with just a small mindset, but a life mindset, life with Jesus mindset. Uh, Holy Spirit, here's a point in your notes. The Holy Spirit has more for you than you're asking for. Friends, I don't know where you sit today, but I just will tell you this. The Holy Spirit has more for you than what you're asking for, whatever that is. Now, I'm not talking about him being Santa Claus, and don't get that story mixed up, because what I'm talking about is that God wants to bring opportunities into our lives. He wants to bring stuff to us, and even in those moments when we don't know where to turn or what to do, we just have to know that God has got to be in it, and if he's in it, he's going to do something with it. Ephesians 3.20 says this, this is the New King James Version of the Bible. Here's what it says. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to his power at work in us. God wants us to walk in his power. He wants us to be people who overcome. He doesn't want us to be people that just get by. He expects us to walk in a place where the path from the past is something to learn from, but it's not a place to live. The past is where we were. Learn from the opportunities that you had through that, but be future-minded, be forward-minded, and that's what we have to do. It's challenging, right? Sometimes it's really challenging. How do I look forward? I don't know what tomorrow brings. But I know who brings tomorrow. Sorry. Here's what I know. That in myself, I can only do so much. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Right? That's where we have to live. 
That's what I want to encourage you to live today. Because God's presence, his power, his strength, his promises, these are the things that you and I uh, are going to have to stand on in our lives to get us through the future that he has for us. It's what he looks for us to do. And so today in our message, I want you to know I'm going to get a little more personal. I want you to get personal with yourself. And I want you to think as we go through this, this morning, God, what are you telling me? Not what are you telling my husband or my wife or my spouse, my friends. Uh, I wish this person was here. I want you to get that away. And I want you to think about, Lord, what are you telling me about me? See, the Holy Spirit wants to get specific with you today. He wants you to think about yourself today. And uh, the, before we jump into this any further, uh, today is uh, really kind of a day of prayer because I want to pray now before we start this uh, time. Well, dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you in your word, it's our prayer, Lord, that you speak to our hearts, that you give us the strength, that you give us wisdom and knowledge to understand your truth as we read it, as we study together. Because, Lord, our goal every day is to grow to be more like you every day. So, Father, use this time together right now to speak to our hearts. Give us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ephesians 2.10 says this. This is the New Living Translation. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us all along. You ever think of yourself as a masterpiece? You ever think that you do? Yeah, that's good. That's good that you do if you do because sometimes I don't think of myself as a, as a masterpiece. Sometimes I, I think of myself as abstract. Like, what is that? What am I looking at here? I don't know what I'm looking at. But God says we are his masterpiece. And he's going to talk to us today through the Apostle Paul about this thing called the Holy Spirit. He's going to talk to us today about something that churches refuse, many refuse to talk about. But we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe we shouldn't talk about that because, you know, the gifts of the Spirit make people feel uncomfortable. Right. Like we're going to not do that, right? We're going to do that. We talk about that stuff. You see, that's what we do. You have to know that at church, if you say you shouldn't talk about it, guess what we're talking about? That's what we're talking about, right? Because it, we've got to look at God's word. We have to understand this. Because if we don't understand what God is talking about, you know what's going to happen. Everyone's going to get confused. And they're going to make something evil out of something that's good. And so I want us to really look at this and get into it a little bit. You know, people say to me at times, oh, people say to me at times, Oh, let me ask you something about your church, Pastor. And I, I read these emails and I kind of smile at it sometimes. And they go, they go, Are, is your church a, a spirit-filled church? And I says, well, we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the gifts of this. Yeah, we're a spirit-filled church. If we, if we didn't have Jesus in our lives, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we wouldn't be a church. So, yeah, we are a spirit-filled church. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But let me ask you it this way. Are you a full gospel church, right? Because they're trying to get to something, right? And I go, full gospel. Yeah, we believe in the truth of the Bible. We believe that God's word is true. Yeah, we're a full gospel church. Because we only preach about Jesus. We're a non-denominational church that believes about Jesus, that believes that the Holy Spirit's in our lives. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, Pastor. But, but now, 
Are you spirit empowered? <laughs> yes. Yes, we're spirit empowered. If we, have, if we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, wouldn't it be terrible to have the Holy Spirit in our lives and not allow the Holy Spirit to empower us to do what he's calling us to do? So yeah, we're, 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 we're spirit empowered. Well, all right, let me just get honest with you. Do you believe in the gifts of the Spirit? How can we be Christ followers that study God's Word, that understand that God gives us spiritual gifts to be able to, to do His work? How could we say, no, we don't believe in that? We wouldn't be a church. Yes, we believe in that. We believe in that. So today, look, at, look I'm going to, okay, here's the last one. Are you guys charismatic? You ever hear that phrase? Are you guys charismatic? So let's talk about it. Charismatic, that word charismatic is a, is a Greek word that is uh, the word charisma, charisma, you know, charisma. And it's made up of two words. One is charis, equaling grace. That means the word grace. And the other one is ma, M-A, that equals gift. So uh, are we charismatic? Do we believe in God's grace and the gift of the Spirit in our lives? Amen. Praise you, Jesus. We believe that with all of our heart. We believe it all of our heart. Now, maybe, maybe what you're saying to me is this. Uh, at your church, do people go running up and down the aisles? No. No, they don't. Sometimes they do when they're saying hi to one another. But otherwise, we don't. But that doesn't make anybody more spiritual than anybody else. You see, we're following God's word. We're a charismatic church. We believe in the gifts of the spirit. We believe in God's power in our lives. We believe in all of those things. We believe that if God said it, it's true. And that's what we're standing on. That's who we are. That's what we believe. The apostle Paul is getting ready to speak to this church in Corinth because they were having issues in the church. The Holy Spirit thing was kind of confusing to people. And he wanted to set them straight. So Paul starts this conversation with a simple verse. It is 1 Corinthians 12.1. Here it is. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. This is the New International Version. That's what I'm preaching through here. I don't want you to be uninformed. So Paul says right from the beginning, hey, listen, now you guys, I want you to really understand what I'm about to tell you because you're going to hear a lot of stuff. And do you know that even today in our world today, churches fight with each other because of the gifts of the Spirit. They don't like each other. They get, say bad things about one another. Hey, listen, if you, if you preach about Jesus, I'm for you. Right? Because that's the deal. That's the big deal. See, here's what I hate. I hate when I miss something because I'm misinformed. Stuff could be going on around me, and I don't know what's going on, and I miss it. And then I go, what happened? What just happened here? Ever do that? It's like, just what, what just happened? I, I, I'm sorry I missed this. You're going to have to go back and, because I want to know everything that I need to know. See, that's, that's what he's saying. Don't be misinformed. Don't miss this. Because I've got something to tell you that's going to tell you how to walk in the fullness of God in your life. 
And then he goes on to talk about this in 1 Corinthians verses 4 through 11. So here's where we go, 4 through 11. There are different kinds of gifts that were gifts, right? Charisma. There are different types of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. And then it says this in verse 7. Now to each one, the, manifest, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for a common good. Now, did, did he say, just stop there just for one second. Did he say, for some, they'll be manifested? It says to each one, to everyone. Let's keep going. Verse 8. To one, there is, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith in the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same one Spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, uh, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. Let's skip that one. And, and, then, and still to another, the interpretation of tongues. We don't want to even talk about that. So number 11, verse 11, all these are at work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. That is as plain as the nose on our face. That God is the giver of all of these gifts and that it doesn't say here that this gift is more important than that one or this one is better than this one. He doesn't say that. He says he distributes them all for a purpose, for a purpose, and we're going to get to that. See, the book of Corinthians is this letter that's been written to these people who are living in Corinth, and they are questioning, and they're having problems because now they're faced with people saying, well, my gift's better than yours. Well, I don't know. You see, that gift that you're talking about, that one gift, that was for them. You ever hear that phrase? That was for them, not for us. That was for people a long time ago. It doesn't count today. And here's what you should know. God's word is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Forever is a long time. Forever doesn't mean, okay, stop doing that. I'm not going to do that anymore. It doesn't work that way. See, people were beginning to think that one gift was greater than another and, and that certain gifts were really important. Hey, if you don't have this one gift, listen, here's what you need to know. If you don't have that one gift, you're not saved. Eh. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. So here's the good news. If you call yourself a Christ follower today, you have at least one spiritual gift. And you probably have more. And it's a matter of us knowing what it is. It's about, it's, a, it's I mean, it. You're special at whatever gift that you have. I mean, now everyone can't come up and preach a message, but God's not called everyone to do that. Everyone can't do certain things, but that's fine because he didn't call everyone to do that. You see, if you're in Christ today, you are gifted. And here's a definition of spiritual gifts. I want to give this to you. I think I put it in your notes, but I'm not sure. Uh, did I? I did. Okay, good. So spiritual gifts equals a special supernatural ability given by the Holy Spirit to individual Christ followers that allows the Holy Spirit to work through their lives to help the church 
fulfill its mission on earth. Friends, you, I tell you this, and I'll tell you this from home, for those of you who are watching from home, many people that come to this church say, I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. All I know is that I believe God led me here. And you know what? It, it, awesome. Because that's what we want, right? We want to, we, wouldn't it be awesome if we, I love that word awesome. I sound young when I do that, right? Uh, uh, awesome. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had a church that was just full and growing of people who felt like the Lord was leading them there? Man, I mean, what could we do? Well, we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We could grow like never before. We could see things happening like never before. Because where I'm not gifted, you may be gifted. You know, nobody wants to walk around with ten big toes. It just doesn't work good that way. <laughs> right? You need a big toe and you need the other toes. You need, to, you need the whole body. We're made up of people who are from a wide range of life. And man, I'm so glad about that. So let's talk about some of these gifts, and I'm going to talk about probably most, uh, I'm going to talk about them. But here's the first one, the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom, that's the first one he talks about. Now, these are not in uh, important order, but these are just in, together. They're all gifts. And it's the ability to face circumstances and know by the Spirit of God how to face those circumstances without any personal experience in that area. Those of you who know me for any amount of time understand that my wife just passed away. But for those of you who don't know, this is uncharted islands for me. You know? And so, the only way I'm going to be able to press forward is through God's wisdom, through his peace, through his joy. Because those of you who, where, who are where I'm at, you say, and I know you've said this, what do I do now? What? Is my life over? And the answer is, and I know this for a fact, because God said this to me. Your wife went home to be with the Lord, but you didn't. And you have a job to do. Right? And so, friends, listen. Wisdom is the most, is really important to our lives. And we have to keep seeking God's wisdom for our lives. And he will see us through the challenges we face. Not because we're so experienced by it, but because God knows all things. The second gift that's talked about is this gift of knowledge. See, this gift of knowledge um, comes to us through God's Word. When you and I are people who study God's Word, I mean more than we do on Sunday morning. I mean like uh, some of us, some of you watching, none of these people, but some of you watching from home, you have a Bible in your house. It's on display because it's, it's there and it looks really nice. And when you open it, the pages go, right? Because it's never been opened. And God says, hey, listen, I want you to open the book. I understand it's hard to understand. I understand that for some, they go, I read this. And, you know, sometimes I just don't know what I'm reading. God gets that. Here's what I have found. The more I do it, the more I understand. And at first, it might be a little bit slow. It might be a little bit hard. But it's never meant to be read like a, like a novel. It's not a storybook. It's a, it's a book of stories that teaches biblical truths. And, it, and it, it, they're all true things. It's all true. And so if you're battling today, man, I'll give you a hint. Go to the back of the book 
and it'll tell you with the different things that people battle, what are some are good things to read? What are some areas to read about? And then we gain knowledge, godly knowledge. And it helps us to battle through the things that we have to battle through. The third thing he talks about is the gift of faith. The gift of faith. When we come to Christ, we're given a gift of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6 says this. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Verse 4. But faith, but by faith, Abel brought God a better offer than Cain did. By faith, he was commended or, or, or commanded uh, as righteous. When God spoke well of his offering, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken from his life, taken from this life, so that he did not experience death. He, he could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. I should have underlined that in your notes. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly, earnestly, some of your Bibles say diligently, seek him. You see, it's pretty clear that by faith, everything happens. And we've been given a measure of faith, every one of us. God, when he was passing faith out, he never said, Bill, I just gave you just about enough, but not quite. He would never say that. You see, God gives us all the faith that we need. He gives us all the wisdom that we need, all the knowledge that we need, everything that we need. Our part is that we have to walk in it. We have to stand on it. It doesn't take faith to believe in things that we see. It takes faith to believe in what God says. See, friends, every one of us will have moments when we feel like our faith is weak. But it isn't. It isn't at all. We just have to refocus. And we have to take our minds off of the enemy and put it on the deliverer of the enemy. Does that make any sense? The truth is that none of us know what's going to happen next. But I'm trusting God to direct us in every situation that we go in. I, I, I know that we're going to be met with obstacles. But God is bigger than the obstacles. See, the next thing we're going to talk about here is something that people are like, Ooh, I don't know if we want to talk about this. It's, another, it's a gift that they talked about in that passage. It's the gift of healing and miracles. Well, pastor, your church certainly doesn't believe in healing and in miracles. Well, we wouldn't be much of a Christ follower if I didn't. Listen, we pray for people to be healed all the time. We believe God works miracles. I could have 
many of you come up here and you can tell everybody what miracles God has done in your life and you'd be able to tell it. You'd be able to say it. You see, do we believe in healing and miracles? You better believe we do. And we know that even when we're praying for physical healing for someone, if they're in Christ and they're not healed physically on this earth, we know that they are physically healed in heaven. You see, that is the truth of God. That's the miracle that we have to stand on. You see, I've had people say to us that, that well, miracles really happened in the Old Testament and in the Bible, and that, but I don't think it really happens today. Well, I'm really sad for you that you think that. You need to come here or you need to listen online, or you need to think about it, because the truth is that God works as many miracles today as he did 2,000 years ago. Well, it mentions the word prophecy in the Bible. Do we believe in prophecy? Well, prophecy is speaking God's truth. It's speaking out what God says. You see, in any given situation, listen, it's easy for me to say, well, this is what I believe, that's what I see. Look, I only believe it if I see it. Well, that doesn't, that's that's not what God says, right? See, God, God says that we, can, we are people that are, we're supposed to prophesy by speaking God's truth. Look at what it says in Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven twenty three. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Really? You believe that? God said it, I believe it. You know, here's what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. Listen, you. Listen, you. Maybe not like that. But he's saying, instead of speaking defeat all the time, how about speaking victory? Instead of focusing on what you see, how about focusing on what God says? Instead of seeking the world's opinion, because we know what that's worth, right? The world's opinion, let's seek God's truth and speak that out. Let me tell you something. Uh, We're coming up on election time in this world. And let me tell you something, Christians, Christ followers, you better be speaking up or forever hold your peace, right? And if you don't like something or if you love something, speak about it and talk about it because uh, we, we just can't be people who just sit back and let God do it when God says, I put you here to do it. Well, the next one we should skip, but we'll, let's just do that one real quick. I'll talk. I'm running out of time, so I got to go. No. <laughs> That's why it's last. The gifts of tongues. The gifts of tongues. Uh, you know, scholars believe that Paul wrote this letter because out of all the gifts that they were battling about, this was the one that they battled on. And there are brothers and sisters in Christ right now who will say, if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life. And that's not biblical. It's not biblical. Sorry. Sorry. And, and if you believe that, sorry. And if you speak in tongues, praise the Lord. But the reality is that God gives everyone gifts and not one is more important than the other. You know, this, this, th- there were two types of tongues talked about in the Bible. And, and uh, I really am running out of time, but I'm going to go a little longer. Uh, uh, there are two types. There's the one, the, the one type that was talked about, um, and it was, it was a natural one. And this was one where um, 
Peter came out to speak to a crowd. He had received the Holy Spirit and he began to speak. And everyone there that were from all different places heard him speak that message in their native tongue. So they heard it, if they were Italian, if they were German, whatever, wherever they were from, they heard it in their own tongue. And so the, di the disciples were doing this and they were speaking this and it was, wow, that's quite a thing. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13.1 If I speak in tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a, ch a can't say that, clanging, clanging uh, symbol. You see, friends, you have to know that, that we believe in all the gifts of the Spirit. But the reality of it is we're not looking for something that creates confusion. We're looking for something to help us to grow in the knowledge of God. And the Bible really is pretty clear about this. And, and Paul says, you know, here's the instructions concerning these gifts. Uh, if, uh, 14, chapter 14, verses 4 and 6. 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verses 4 through 6. Uh, anyone who speaks in tongues edifies themselves. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. See, uh, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but... But uh, I would rather have you prophesy. What does he mean? Speak God's word. He'd rather have you speak God's truth. Uh, the one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues unless someone interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will it do or what good will I be to you Unless I bring someone um, revelation or knowledge or prophecy or to instruct you, to give you instructions. See, uh, for some reason, this speaking in tongues to this church in Corinth became like the big deal. And Paul is saying, that ain't it. That's not right. In fact... My Bible says it's the least of the gifts. That's really going to make somebody very happy with me just now, just saying that. Romans 12, 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. You see, there's other gifts talked about in the Bible. There's gift of encouraging, gift of hospitality, gift of service, gift of leadership, gift of giving, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says this, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for a common good. Here's a point in your notes. The gifts are not given to you, but they are, the gifts, I'm sorry, the gifts are given to you, but they are not just for you. Did I say that right? The gifts are given to you, but they're not given just for you. God wants you to use those gifts for yourself, but he wants you to use that for the family, to help one another, to care for one another. And then it says this, and this is kind of out of nowhere. Uh, Ephesians 5, 18. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Now, if you don't know today what your spiritual gifts are, if you don't know what that is, I want to encourage you to go to the church website or go on Facebook. And under Wednesday Night Oasis, there is a series there called the 201 class. And if you go to that, you can watch that series and take a gifts assessment. And on that gifts assessment, it will tell you what you're gifted in. And it could be it changes, could be changes, could be, be not. But try to check it out and see. It's, it's interesting, and people get something out of that. And, and he talks about, you know, don't be drunk on wine, 
But you know how that makes you act for people that have done that and be filled with the Spirit. Have that same abandonment. Have that same excitement. Have that same going after it. 1 Corinthians 14.1 Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. He wants us to desire that. He wants us to desire the gifts. I want to close with this. Three things. Three things. This is how you and I go after the gifts of the Spirit. Number one, follow the giver. Follow the giver. We don't seek the gifts. We need to seek the giver of gifts. I don't care what gifts he gives me. I just want it to be the ones he wants me to have. Right? The second one is this. Remember, God prepares and empowers us to do what he's calling, to do, calling us to do. He will never ask you to do anything he doesn't make you able to do. And so just understand that. And that means that you should be able to walk in confidence in that. And here's the third one. Realize that the power in your life is the power of God living in you. Because friends, the bottom line is within ourselves, we have no power. And the only power we have is what God puts in us. That's it. Maybe you're watching from home today. Maybe you're here. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Well, I, I'll have you know that in this series, we've been talking about the gifts of the Spirit, and that comes to the believer. And so if you've never asked Jesus to come into your life, today's the day. And I want to invite you to pray with me because we never leave a service without giving you that opportunity to ask Jesus to come in. If you're here, please pray with me. Uh, repeat after me and you do the same and ask Jesus to come into your life. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. I accept you now as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.